everyone. I am Camille Miller, the founder and executive director of the Natural Life Business Partnership. And you are with me today at NLBP TV for a member spotlight with Susan Marco. Susan's an advanced clinical hypnotist out of Monmouth County, New Jersey. Her tagline is Hypno, helping you produce new options. Thank you, Susan, for joining us today. Hi, Camille. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to do the spotlight. No problem. I always okay. love to hear about um, people's businesses and how they got involved in it. So um, give me and our listeners a um, little bit of like history, like how you got to where you are. I know this business is a little bit new for you. So give me a synopsis of your journey. How about that? Yeah, great. So, um, so this business is new for me, but hypnosis really is not that new for me in okay. a sense that, so I was a massage therapist for 30 uh, years. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, um, you know, throughout my practice, it's always been a goal for me to help people learn how to relax and how to find an inner sense of stillness and peacefulness. So, um, when it really started was when I was in my 20s, I met my first meditation teacher. Mm -hmm. And he taught a series of exercises that became something that he called pragmatic meditation and awareness training. And unbeknownst to me at the time, the series of exercises and practices that I used for the, the following 10 years, at least on a daily basis, um, were really self-hypnosis. A lot of the techniques were self-hypnosis techniques. So my start and my entry into uh, spiritual practices was through hypnosis. I just didn't really, I didn't know it. Is, is all meditation self-hypnosis? No. It's, it's not. not. What's the it's difference? So well, the difference really, in, and this is my description, okay, okay. is mm -hmm. for me meditation is sort of mastering the skill of stillness and inner peace where hypnosis is a little more goal oriented so usually when you enter into a hypnotic state you're doing it because you want to accomplish something okay so whether you're learning to relax or whether you're learning you know a way of dealing with a phobia or if you want to change a habit like smoking or weight loss or you know any of those other kinds of things um, it's more goal oriented where meditation is about getting quiet and still and learning how to go inside. Hypnosis is more about attaining something. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so, so in, in my early practice, both things were part of that process. So there, was, there were certain exercises that brought us to a point of stillness and mm -hmm. sort of um, you know, learning how to master detaching from the thoughts as they came and went and then asking a question or seeking out some kind of outcome from that period of time of that meditation. All so right. the outcome could be, you know, searching for clarity on an issue or uh, for instance, for me, I had been given the names of three massage schools at the time and I was feeling, uh, I don't know, I just was procrastinating about it. I had fear and I, you know, concerns about that. And so I asked, what do I need to do here? where is the place for me to go? And I went into, and I used these techniques and went into this self meditation or self hypnosis. And when I emerged, I had this huge aha moment of, you have to go right now and check out this one school that you've been given that, you know, check out one of the schools of the three that you've been given the names of. And I did, I followed through and I went to the school and it was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Wow. And that started my massage practice. So I, okay. I went to school and I got my certification and, um, you know, continued to practice that all those years while practicing these other techniques. And so even in my massage practice before I was, you know, obviously before I was trained as a hypnotist, mm -hmm. I would impart some of these practices that I did with my clients to help them get quiet and still and learn how to go inside of themselves to find the answers that they were looking for. During their massage? During their massage. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, we do a little guided relaxation before mm -hmm. their session. So, you know, the, it was a natural thing for me 
couple of years ago when I realized, you know, that I might really start to look at where am I going next? Because although I love massage and the practice of it, and I still, gratefully, I can still do it physically, mm -hmm. you know, eventually I'm going to start to get tired and maybe right. you know, be good. So I found a teacher and a school and I went and got my training, my certificate, and here I am. Wow. So um, how long have you been doing hypnosis then? So I got my certification. Yeah. I got my certification in uh, April of 2018. Okay. So it's a little over a year. Okay. So it's a kind of a natural. It sounds like it's a natural journey, which we find with a lot of you know the, on the spiritual healer side. Yes. It's you know part of a journey is they learn mo new modalities as they themselves grow. Yes. Which, and then and then you just want to serve others and help as you as you experienced it, right? Yeah, That's exactly. how we all do it. So uh, I think the biggest question people have about his hypnosis is um, uh, can it make them do something they don't want to do? That's a great um, question. It, yeah, because I'm yes. sure that's the first thing people are like, oh, no, so scared, not doing it. There are a lot of misconceptions um, okay. and even expectations about hypnosis. So here's the thing. There is no way that I can make you do something outside of your comfort zone or your moral compass. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people, you know, they base that thought or idea on when you see show hypnosis, see somebody do a right, show, right. Yeah. And you see them on the stage and they make them quack like a duck or right, exactly. walk around like a chicken or, um, you know, be some kind of a person that they're not. So those, there are people who are more suggestible than others. And there are also people who have low inhibitions and they're willing to be made fun of or to play in that venue. Okay. A trained show hypnotist will choose the people who are willing to play. It's really meant to be play. I see. And yeah. So if somebody is easily suggested into a state of hypnosis and will receive those suggestions easily, then they'll do those silly things on stage in front of them. That makes sense. When you come to a clinical hypnotist or a hypnotherapist, you know, my goal is to help you attain a, a something. So, you know, whether it's ch uh, reducing stress or changing phobia or um, changing habits, that kind of thing, my goal is to help you get to where you want to be. My goal in no way is to embarrass you or make you feel foolish. And the other part of that is that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. Okay. That's interesting. So, right. So you, you allow yourself not to gonna go in your mind. You're not going to go where you don't want to go. Okay. So I have a process when I first work with a client on the phone, there's the initial conversation where you know, I determine if this person really wants to use hypnosis. Some people, you know, they think maybe it's a good thing for them, but we have an in-depth in conversation about whether I'm a good fit and whether hypnosis is a good fit for them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and whether, you know, if honestly, it's my, my goal is to help you be successful in whatever it is that you want to do. Gotcha. If you are not 100% behind that, if you don't really have a strong desire for that to happen, I can't help you with that. Yeah. So in a hypnotic state, can people go back to remember things that they can't remember in their conscious mind? Is it like tapping into your subconscious or superconscious to yes. kind of see why you're acting a certain way or feeling a certain way? Is it? And, and that allows you to see that? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So how the, mechanically how it works is that we have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Okay. And what we do in hypnosis is we talk you into a very deep, relaxed state, but you're also in a heightened state of concentration and awareness. Okay. And what happens is the conscious mind takes a back seat and the subconscious mind comes to the forefront. So the subconscious mind is essentially where everything we've learned, 
everything we've experienced is stored. It's kind of like the storehouse of everything we've ever done. Mm -hmm. The conscious mind is kind of more the logical, uh, uh, logistical part of our daily existence. Right. And, you know, it's interesting to know also, I just want to stick this in here where, you know, we're in and out of trance all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Just look at it that way. So have you ever been driving down the road and all of a sudden you realize, I just passed my exit. How did that happen? Sometimes the conscious mind can become overloaded. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes a break and it goes into the background. The subconscious comes to the forefront. The subconscious knows how to drive, knows how to focus and concentrate, but you're in sort of an altered state. So if another car jumps in front of your car, you're going to put your foot on the brake instinctively and automatically. Yep. Your conscious mind is going to, if there's danger, your conscious mind is going to come to the forefront immediately. And, you know, you'll take care of what you have to take care of. So what we do in hypnosis is we sort of coach or, um, uh, you know, we kind of ask the conscious mind to take a backseat okay. and bring the subconscious forward. And then there are several different techniques that we can use to sort of go back along a timeline through a person's history to uncover whatever it is that they need to see. And so, then, yeah. I was just going to say, things. when they uncover it, mm -hmm. is it work more like, more like a talk therapy idea? Like, okay, now you know where that belief came from. You can see it's, it's not serving you anymore. Is that, or do you put in a new belief? Like how does, yes. so once you've realized it's there, what do you do with it? That's a great question. So, so in my initial, you know, when someone wants to do this kind of work, I essentially, I call forward two different parts of the person. We call forward the positive part of the person mm -hmm. and the part that controls whatever the issue is that they want to change. And once we have those two parts present, we do a regression back to the origin of whatever the issue is. So let's just say the issue is sugar addiction. Somebody eats too much sugar and they're headed toward diabetes and they want to change that, right? Okay. Yep. So we go back in time and, you know, all I do is guide the person back and their subconscious tells them and me where to stop. Oh, gotcha. So they'll recall something like, oh, I was, I remember I was 12 years old. And I'm sitting in my grandmother's house, and there's a bowl of candy on the table. My grandmother is telling me, oh, have a piece of candy, honey. And then, so we uncover these different timelines. Through this timeline, we uncover these different time periods and different events that happen. And once we reach the origin of whatever that issue is for the person, there are a few other things that I do with them. Okay. Some of it is inner child work while they're in a this deep state of relaxation and heightened awareness, we do some work to um, allow them to heal whatever might be unsettled or sort of they might be holding on to something from their childhood that's not serving them anymore. So we do a piece of work around that and then we do a piece of work around forgiveness so that they can forgive anyone who may have had a negative effect on them or you know, helped to create this issue mm -hmm. and also to forgive themselves in any way that they feel, you know, that they might have been responsible. Right. Oh, that's and then, yes, what we do is we, so we've now taken that part and neutralized it, the part that controls this unwanted behavior. We've now neutralized that. So now we want to give them new jobs because we've just taken their job away. Uh -huh. Right. And so in the session, before we even go into this regression piece, the client mm -hmm. and I will determine what their new jobs are going to be or their suggestions for the future. Okay. So in the case of the sugar addiction, you know, make somebody drink more water, make somebody feel calm and relaxed so they don't feel like they have to grab that candy bar or that sugar fix. Um, make somebody crave vegetables and fruits rather than the candy bar. Or the right. I mean, those are, you know, general suggestions. 
Yeah. And you said yeah. earlier that someone really has to be ready to make that change. Yes. So is it because they subconsciously block the change? Sometimes. That, is that how that it works? Yeah. Or they, you know, so I've had people sort of resist the process of going into this state of relaxation. Okay. They kind of, there's a little resistance there. And if they're not really in that deep state, it might work. It might not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those people. <laughs> I've never been able to go into. People have tried. <laughs> so I think some, oh. of that, some of that has to do with the expectation around it, too. And, you know, kind of just allowing the process to unfold. Yeah. So I had a guy come to me, because one of the other things that I do, you know, this is past life regression. I was going to ask you about that next. Yeah. Come to me, who I know, and... Um, he was very surprised because he did not expect to go into any kind of state of relaxation. And he had an amazing experience. Wow. So he remembered, went back to the Civil War. Oh. And he had a, an untimely death that involved a lot of guilt for him. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of guilt, it was easy to figure out was how he was experiencing it in this lifetime is in undervaluing himself. Gotcha. Okay, as an artist and as a person. And, wow. you know, Beautiful. this guilt kind of follows him around through his life now. And being able to uncover that moment so many lifetimes ago really gave him a shift in the way he looks at himself. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, when they come out like this person or anybody, when they come out of this hypnosis, do they, they actively remember everything that they saw? Are they telling you while it's happening and then they remember everything like they watched a TV show? So far, anybody that I've worked with has remembered mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. That's and that's be... the, other, the other misconception about hypnosis, you're not in a coma. Mm -hmm. You're not out of it completely. <laughs> You may fade in and out, and that's that's okay. You know that's normal. But the the regression part, people come out of it. They're like, oh my gosh, I had completely forgotten about that. You know, wow. when I was a kid, how my grandmother was with me, or how you yeah, know, my father treated me. I had completely forgotten about that. Yeah. And they, so they have a working memory, and even if they don't, uh, so I don't. One of the things I do in my session is I record the session. Oh, okay. I do not record the, you know, in a clinical session when we're looking for the origin of, you know, an issue, I don't record that part of it, but the rest of it is recorded. So if you listen to your recording, often if somebody, even if they did kind of fade out, it sort of comes back because it's right there in the forefront of their memory. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's interesting. So the but, other thing that I just want to make sure that I say this, the other thing about that recording is that I send that recording to my client and I request, you know, I can't require somebody to do anything, but I request that they listen to that recording every day, at least once a day for a month. Because these things, changes happen, you know, you, you have to um, be consistent with something for to really have a lasting change. Right. So or somebody, some kind of action step behind it to kind of exactly. solidify, like. <laughs> exactly. Redo that imprinting, yeah. 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 And, and at the very least, my session is extremely relaxing. And I've had people come for, uh, like, for instance, I had a guy come to me once for, he had this horrible skin issues, an un solvable rash he had been to doctor upon doctor upon doctor and they couldn't figure out where this thing was coming from and he was itching constantly okay but of course he wasn't sleeping so i said to him listen i don't know if i can help you with the rash let's try we did the session he came out of the session he said to me this is the first time in eight months that i have not itched wow for the entire time he was in the chair relaxing he took the conscious mind went away. Right. The conscious mind came forward. He was in this deep state of relaxation and suddenly this itching just dissipated. And so he uses that recording now to sleep because he was also having insomnia due to this condition. 
and I, this is kind of a funny story. I happen to know them personally. He and his wife are friends of mine. And a, a couple of months later, I spoke to his wife and she said, oh, he's still listening to his recording. And I just have to tell you, he listens to it before we go to sleep in the bedroom. So when we go to sleep, it's you and me and him in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> but it worked for him. You know, it, the, Did the nothing else. eventually in the rash go away from that or just from the calmness? No, no, unfortunately, it did not go away. Um, he didn't come for a second session. Okay. Uh, yeah. And also, but I do believe that the, his medical interventions, that they did figure something out with, you know, where it was coming from in terms of it was an autoimmune thing. And, you know, they got him on some kind of a program. That I'm, I'm just curious. Could hypnosis in that case or something like that case can your subconscious find the root cause and say, well, we're allergic to corn or it's this, it's, is that possible or not really? Well, I believe that that's possible. It yeah. did not happen in this particular instance. Okay. I get that. I have no answer as to why there could have been some deeper rooted things that he wasn't ready to get to. I totally understand that. Yeah. So I, you know, I make no yeah. promises. I, I would never say I'm a hundred percent successful or, you know, I'm as successful as my client is ready to be. Yeah. I yeah. totally so, understand exactly what you mean by that. So, and, and sometimes to change a belief, there's layers to it. Yes. And sometimes uh, sometimes it's only going to let you have that like outer layer until they get that meaning yeah. you know that message that lesson before they can go to the next layer yes really understood yeah that so was. it's not a magic bullet but it is a really useful tool to be able to access parts of yourself and find answers to your issues questions problems and then on the other end of it I just want to make sure and say that this is not only about dealing with issues so sometimes a person will come because they want to enhance something okay. so use hypnosis to calm the mind and access different aspects of what we already know so for instance very very helpful in study skills so mm -hmm. if you know you have someone who you know, let's say your kid is going to take their SATs. Yeah. Hypnosis and certain tools that we can help, you know, send them home with that can help them be calm and relaxed and know that they already know what they need to know. Yeah. And it's that test. Yeah. No, or that, even, yeah. you know, to enhance a golf game. Mm hmm. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> or any kind of skill, you know, that a person has that they want to be better at. Yeah, because I guess you can kind of take away the fear around it. Yeah, and also, um, you know, kind of set the, you set it up that, you know, to be in a deeper state of calm and relaxation and not, you know, anxiety about how am I going to do, how am I going to be. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Um, anything I forgot to ask or that you want to add before we wrap this up? this or your particular practice do you specialize in anything or do you oh that's a good one thank you yeah. uh so so i can't really say i specialize yet because i don't feel like i've been practicing long enough to say okay. that. but i have two areas that i lean toward that are really close to my heart mm -hmm. one is helping people stay in recovery from substance use disorder issue Okay. Um, we have a family member, a close family member who struggled with heroin addiction for many years, who is mm -hmm. now 18 months clean and sober and wow. so proud of them for that. And so, you know, I've met a lot of people. I'm involved in the addiction arena locally. I have an organization for family members and also I work uh, voluntarily with a local task force. And I've met so many young people, especially that who are in recovery, who are the most amazing, I mean, spectacular people you'd ever want to know. And they're, they're gifted and intelligent. And, you know, I, so I like to um, help someone who's been, who has gone through that to stay in recovery. Beautiful. And hypnosis is a really good tool for that, for self-empowerment 
and you know to just kind of bolster the inner strength that it, that you need to stay in recovery especially from something as strong as heroin yeah so that's one thing and the other thing is um through a personal journey of mine i am looking to work in the oncology uh, world with uh, people who have had cancer mm -hmm. uh, or who have a new diagnosis so helping to deal with anxiety fear um, pre-surgical hypnosis is extremely useful to put, wow. to put a patient into um, you know a state of trust and you know kind of if you can put yourself in the right state going into a surgical procedure right. it potentially make your outcome better and then also helping people with side effects from treatment um, pain control and you know all that kind of stuff so I, that's close to my heart as well so those are two areas that i'm leaning into now to, terrific to use hypnosis terrific so if people are listening to this later and they will be how would they get in touch with you if they had more questions do you do, i'm sorry i should ask one more question do you do this distance at all or do you do it all in person okay so i have not ventured into the distance distance okay hypnosis thing yet uh, okay you know i'm a little hesitant because I feel, you know, I, you really would need to have certain checks and balances in place to be able to do that. Okay. Uh, you know, just because somebody, you know, it's potential. Sometimes somebody can have a bad reaction and it's really helpful to be present with that person yeah. to be able to help them through. Uh, you know, you can feel more when you're present than yep. you understand. Really know. Not yeah. yet, but there, I think there are certain applications down the road that I will probably Okay. I'll keep you posted about okay, that. Fair enough. Um, and so if people want to get in touch with you, how would they yeah. do that? So um, first I want to say you can check more out about me and my, and my life at susanmarco.com. Excellent. Website. I can be emailed at susan.marco at gmail.com or people can reach me by phone at 732-500-7843. I promise to get back to you within 24 hours. Excellent. Thank you, Susan, for joining us today. Thank you, Camille. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Susan's information will be in our show notes. Uh, if you're listening to this later, you can just look at our show notes attached to this and all of our information will be there. And hopefully if you have any other questions after this, you can just write them in the comments below and we will get in touch with Susan um, to answer them for you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Susan, for being on NLBP TV today with our member spotlight.